Welcome to the West. Welcome to Colorado. Welcome to the Broadmoor. This remarkable property located southwest of Colorado Springs at the foot of Cheyenne Mountain has been a great American golf destination for nearly 100 years. Hi, I'm Amanda Balionis. For decades, the Broadmoor has attracted the world's finest professional golfers and amateurs, as well as celebrities, entertainers, athletes, and captains of industry. Golfers of all ages and all skill levels come to the Broadmoor to immerse themselves in an unforgettable golf experience. It starts with the Broadmoor's three phenomenal golf courses, each one a terrific combination of challenge and beauty. The renowned East Course was designed by esteemed architect Donald Ross and opened in 1918. Ross is revered for the work he did during a period known as golf's golden age of architecture between 1910 and 1940, when he also designed Pinehurst No. 2, Seminole and Oakland Hills. The Broadmoor has hosted seven USGA championships, soon to be eight with the upcoming 2018 U.S. Senior Open. Past championships include the 1959 U.S. Amateur, won by Jack Nicklaus, two U.S. Women's Opens, and the U.S. Women's Amateur. But perhaps the most stirring victory came in 1995, when Annika Sorenstam won the U.S. Open here, the first of her 10 major championship victories. I remember coming in here being pretty, you know, green as a golfer, just my second year on tour, and hadn't really played in a lot of major championships before and I've always dreamed about winning a U.S. Open. Um, obviously it's hard to, to believe that that would ever happen but uh, to come here you know kind of left as a under the radar and then you know seven days later all of a sudden you know my life had changed. The West Course, higher up the mountain, was designed by Robert Trent Jones Sr. and opened in 1965. Jones incorporated the lower holes of the original Donald Ross course into the West layout, which is known for its many dog legs, elevation changes, and mountain views. Last is the mountain course, designed by Arnold Palmer and opened in 1976, then renovated by Nicholas Design in 2006. This layout is aptly named, giving it sloping fairways and greens and numerous forced carries. Fortunately, the ball goes especially far in the thin mountain air. A golfer can relax at the Broadmoor because director of golf Russ Miller and his staff are approachable, knowledgeable, and tremendously accommodating. They know how to make a golfer feel welcome, and they have a special talent for teaching, so consider taking a lesson while you're here. Complimentary clinics are offered seasonally every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday at 3 p.m. In addition to great memories, you'll also take home a better golf game. Brand new at the Broadmoor is the Callaway Golf Club Fitting Experience with a variety of modern technologies to fit the latest Callaway equipment precisely to your swing to help you hit longer, straighter shots. The fitting is complimentary, so don't miss this opportunity. Speaking of Callaway, you'll find a full complement of Callaway clubs, balls, gloves, bags, apparel, footwear, and accessories in the Broadmoor's full-service golf shop. And if you're in the mood to play but didn't bring your sticks, full sets of men's and women's Callaway clubs are available for rent. The Broadmoor is also a practice paradise for players who are at home on the range. The main practice facility features a multi-tiered tee, five target greens, two chipping greens with bunkers, and three putting greens. It's the perfect place to dial in your full swing and short game or simply warm up before your round. Okay, let's assume you've warmed up and are ready to play. Beware that scoring well at the Broadmoor requires a certain amount of local knowledge because what you see isn't always what you get, especially on the greens. For the ins and outs, as well as tips from the East and West courses, we recruited Hall of Famer Annika Sorenstam, who won the 1995 U.S. Women's Open here at the Broadmoor.
I mean, it's a beautiful golf course. It's challenging from tee to green, but it's really on the greens where things happen. Uh, they're smaller greens, you know, they're not just, you know, flat plateaus. I mean, it's, uh, you got to make sure you hit them in the right spots. It's very hard when you're above the hole. It's, uh, the greens get really slippery, very fast, quickly, and a lot of times you go from playing aggressively to just, you know, tapping the ball to get it close. And it's hard if you have to play defensive the whole time. So leaving the ball short of the hole, then you can be more aggressive. So the 12th hole is dog leg right, a little downhill. This is quite an interesting hole because you, there's two ways to play it. If you feel, um, feel like playing aggressively, you can kind of cut the corner. And if you hit a good drive, you will just have a really short little pitch shots up to the green. So kind of risk reward type. Uh, but if you're a little bit more on the conservative side and don't feel like hitting a driver, maybe with a you know, hybrid or iron off the tee, focus on the left side, open up the angle towards the green, have a longer shot in, but a little bit more safer. And, uh, but it's fun with holes where you have an option. I, I always, I've always liked par threes where the tee is a little higher than the green. Obviously you can hit down. It makes it a little easier for maybe a person that doesn't hit the ball as solid. You're gonna get the help with the slope. I mean, this, this hole is really downhill. But I think, you know, being the highest point on the course, you get the, the best views. And I remember asking uh, the pro or, you know, some of the caddies here and, and the starter, I said, what do I need to know other than, I mean, I know the course, I know the yardage, I know we will know where the whole location will be, but what is the one thing I need to, to know? And they said, look up in the mountain. I said, okay. You see the shrine over there? I said, yeah. When you're on the green, if you see it, everything breaks away from the shrine. And again, with uh, a severe downhill, it makes it a little easier, but it's also about, you know, putting the ball in the right places here. Uh, but when you do play, uh, trying to focus on what you got to do and don't get distracted with the beautiful views. 18 and par four, now we're coming back to the clubhouse. Uh, it's, uh, the green is a little bit elevated. Um, there's a creek crossing the fairway into the green. Uh, my memory was, you know, at the time, I was just trying to hit the fairway. I was just trying to hit the green. I mean, the fairway is quite wide, so that's, uh, you know, pretty generous off the tee. The green, again, a little smaller. I played a little longer. I remember having a long, longer iron in, and just getting on the green is a, is a good thing here. And uh, for me, I was lucky to have a two-putt to, uh, you know, make par. And, but of course, in my case, I have to sit and wait for the next, uh, next groups to come in. But it's, it's a great finishing hole. It sets up beautifully for, a, you know, for kind of a, a bleacher and lots of people watching, but also nice to come into the clubhouse. As if a golfer needed any more convincing, the Broadmoor has made visiting here even more appealing with the new Callaway Stay and Play package. We're clear that golf at the Broadmoor is as good as it gets, yet golf is only part of the Broadmoor experience. After all, you can't earn a reputation as one of America's finest resorts unless you also offer fine dining and accommodations ranging from hotel suites, brownstone houses, and quaint cabins all exuding the rustic luxury feel that the Broadmoor is famous for. And I'll say it again, there's so much more to the Broadmoor than golf. There's fly fishing at the Broadmoor Fishing Camp and the Seven Falls Hiking and Zip Line Experience. There's boating, biking, horseback riding, tennis, swimming, rock climbing, and even falconry. Broadmoor is a beautiful place. I mean, it has so much to offer. Uh, but now, obviously, being a, a mother and coming here as a family, you realize there's so much to do. When I was here playing, I was just focused on the golf course, and obviously they have three golf courses to choose from, but as a family, there's so many activities. I mean, it goes from, from the pool, to fishing, to boating. Uh, I mean, the list goes on. They have pool tables, bowling, movie theater, and also some great restaurants. So I can't uh, think of a better place to come as a family and, and just have fun, different ages. And, uh, you know, we're enjoying it very much, and. Uh, Wish we can stay longer because there's so much to do and there's never enough time. You can hop aboard the historic Cog Railway, visit the Cheyenne Mountain Zoo, or get behind the wheel of a Cadillac with the Cadillac Driving Experience. You can take a cooking class or an outdoor drawing, painting, or photography class. Or you can give your body and mind a break at the Broadmoor Spa. For kids, there's the Bee Bunch Day Camp and complimentary golf clinics. 
And of course, there's the Broadmoor's well-deserved reputation for culinary excellence, earned by a variety of on-property restaurants, cafes, and lounges, each with its own unique menu of food and drinks. This is the West. This is Colorado. This is the Broadmoor. No place combines a feel for the West with rustic luxury, the great outdoors, and great culinary culture like this place. That's what makes this the most unique resort in the world. Find out more at Destination Broadmoor.